Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Wednesday, your hump day, September 18th, 2019. Happy hump day. Welcome to your midweek. Um, we are halfway towards the weekend, y'all. Woohoo! Yes, that sounds like a great idea, even though I'm going to be working all weekend, but you know what? That's fine. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, as you can tell, I'm in a little better, a little higher, a little brighter spirits today. Um, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Things are personally, for me, things are feeling better. However, that is not for lack of trying. Like this whole week is dedicated in my, for me, this whole week is dedicated to, as Abraham would say, getting into and staying in the vortex. All right. Um, I have been, I mean, I used to listen to Abraham Hicks years ago when I first really started my awakening process. Um, and at that time I was watching people like uh, Infinite Waters or Ralph Smart. Um, Teal Swan was huge for me at that time and uh, Abraham Hicks and I was reading the Seth books. If you've, been, if you've never read the Seth books, I highly recommend them. Um, they're, written, they're written by Jane Roberts or is it Jane Roberts' son? I think it's Roberts. Um, but she uh, channeled, she was very similar to, to Esther Hicks in the sense that Jane would go into a trance and she would channel this collective consciousness that goes by the name of Seth. Um, whereas Esther does something very similar. She kind of clears her mind and, um, and, and Abraham speaks through her. Now, Jane was different because she would, she would literally like go into a trance and I feel like, I think she would kind of like black out even um, because she never really had a recollection of what was happening. It wasn't until she read what her husband had uh, transcribed for her. So she would go into the trance, Seth would come through and would speak and, and Jane's husband would, um, would write it all down. Uh, and would record it all down and all that. And then, so Jane wouldn't know what was going on until she came out of the trance and she read it. I highly recommend those books. They were so transformative for me. They were very much a, a huge eye opener for me. Um, but anyway, I've been listening to, uh, it's called the Seth books. Um, I want to look, let me look and get into my Kindle situation here and see if I can get a title for you. But I have been really, really, really working on my vibration. And um, one thing specifically that I want to talk about, um, but keep in mind also, we don't really have a pre-shuffle. Um, I was channeling the energies and nothing was coming out. However, we do have here in the overall energy, we do have this Queen of Cups again. And it's the same side, all right? Independence is a really big thing right now for the collective. Um, and her back is turned. I really do feel like whomever I'm channeling for here, um, this part of the collective, emotional unavailability is like a thing right now. And it's not even like we're trying to be emotionally unavailable. It's just that like for, for we're just not. We're not emotionally available right now because we're going within. We're doing a lot of clearing work that's bringing forward a change or a closing out of a cycle, a big major overarching cycle here, okay, with the world, all right? I wanted to show you that. but um, So that's absolutely what I've been doing. Um, and it's working. I'm not going to lie. Every day is getting a little better, um, but it's not... <laughs> You guys, it's not easy. <laughs> I'm sure you know, it's really not easy. Um, let's see. I'm trying to get the name of this book. Oh goodness, where are, is it not even on here? It's not, this is my phone. It's not on my phone, it's on my iPad, forget it. But it's The Seth Books by Jane Roberts. I highly recommend them, okay? All right, guys. So, with that said, yeah. Um, Emotional independence, just being independent, just, and, and, and for me, 
I mean, this is very, actually, I, I'm surprised I didn't see it like this before, but this is very indicative of being in hermit mode, all right? And all of my Cancerians out there, y'all know what I'm talking about, especially since the Queen of Cups is the archetype of Cancerian energy, okay? And Cancers, I mean, in, in I, I completely, I totally understand this because in Eastern astrology, my moon is in Cancer. And let me tell you, man, I love to go into hermit mode um, <laughs> when the time is right, of course. Um, but also, I really enjoy spending time by myself. You know, I, I really, I really enjoy my alone time. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I would love to have someone, a companion, you know, to share that alone time with. But it can't just be anybody. Like, I, I don't want just a body around just to have somebody around. No, I want if I'm going to have somebody in my space all up in my alone time, then I want somebody to like, you know, gel with me, whatnot, whatever. But but the Queen of Cups here is Cancerian energy. And this just uh, many, many, many of us. I mean, there's one person in particular that left a comment twice on two of the morning coffee readings, I believe consecutively, saying how, you know, you got, you were guided all through August to go into hermit mode in September. And girl, I am right there with you. That's what this is, okay? Because, but it's not because, it's not because we are trying to be um, reclusive. We're trying to be, uh, we're, you know, we're, we're rejecting all people. We don't, we, we, it's not about that. It's in order for us to do some emotional cleansing, some emotional clearing and work on closing out some cycles. And this is a situation in which we are consciously closing out cycles. Okay. Like we're taking the bull by the reins and we're saying, all right, enough of this. It's time to go somewhere else. Emotionally speaking which in turn will lead you somewhere else physically, right? We're literally in this process of cleaning up our internal realities, cleaning up our emotional reality, our emotional atmosphere, our emotional environment, um, our, 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 emotion, our vibrations even, okay? This is a very deeply introspective time. All right, guys, so, with that said, let me give this, I'm going to give this two shuffles and then we're going to get into the rest of the reading. Alrighty. Here we go. Oh, uh, before I go any further, I also want to say that um, as I was channeling before I started the reading, before I actually before I started the video, um, as I was getting settled into the energies of the day, the color for the day is pink. Unconditional love. And I really do feel like in this process right now, in this this period that we're in, this phase that we're in, we're all learning to love ourselves unconditionally. And there's a lot of emotional purging and emotional cleansing, clearing, and healing that's coming from going through that process of learning to love ourselves unconditionally. You guys, the sun just peeked out from behind the clouds and it like was the most joyous thing. <laughs> it was such a joyous thing. I don't know why I was feel I felt compelled to share that with you, but there it is. Here comes the sun. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get into this. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Wednesday, our hump day, September 18th, 2019. What is it that you would like to discuss with us today, Spirit? Thank you so much. All right, three shuffles, kids. And then we'll see what we've got for our hump day. Keep in mind, guys, that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, 
This reading is timeless just because it's it's uh, dated for the 18th of September doesn't mean it has to resonate on that day. Whenever you catch this reading and it resonates for you, that is the message for you at that time. Yes? Excellent. Last shuffle. All right. Let's see what we've got. What do you want to discuss with us today, Spirit? Wednesday, September 18th, 2019. Nothing, huh? <laughs> Obviously, it's not nothing. I'm just going to keep going until we get something here. My eyes are closed, so I can't really see. So I won't be able to see what falls out when it falls out, but. Ooh. All right. Um, bear with me, guys. We're getting there. We're getting there. Wednesday, September 18th. What would you like to discuss with us today, please, Spirit? There we go. There's some. I'm just going to keep going here, guys. I'm not, we're not done yet. It's not the whole message yet. There's more. All right. One last, one last go around. We'll see what we get here, maybe. That didn't come out. All right. There we go. One more. Okay. 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 All right. I'm going to let it fall out naturally, guys. If it doesn't fall out of my hand, I'm not taking it. There it is. That's enough. Okay. Excellent. Ooh. All right. All right. We have death. But on this side of the card, we have the rebirth from that death. And then on the other side, we've got the Six of Wands. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Look at here, guys. Look, we're doing some really excellent work. I'm going to tell you that right now. We have the Hierophant here. But it's the side of the card where now we're seeing past his illusions. Mm-hmm. We are seeing past his illusions. And it's it's interesting because I love the fact that this side of the card um, has this goddess figure on here, okay? Because this specifically, uh, please excuse the, the manicure. I've been like so entrenched in like just loving and accepting myself that I have not redone my nails. I am accepting that I am not perfect and that my nails are needing to be redone. So there you have it. <laughs> anyway, um, I find it really, really poignant that there's a goddess figure on this side of the card because a lot of what the Hierophant stands for, at least in this current day and age within the patriarchy, is the complete, um, we'll say, I just heard abolishment, so I'm gonna say that, um, but also negation of feminine wisdom in order to control. Uh, I'm not speaking on behalf of the masculine collective. Um, keep in mind, guys, that we do have both masculine and feminine energies within us. However, me speaking for myself personally, I do resonate more with feminine energy, okay? Uh, I still have my own issues with masculine energy and masculinity that I'm working on trying to work out and I'm trying to integrate my own inner sense of masculine energy. But I, I just, I'm going to say this because I just intuitively, intuitively got a flash of it. But part of the reason why feminine wisdom and feminine energy has been shunned so much is because women and feminine energies are feared in a, in a way. It's wild, it's chaotic, it's unpredictable. But that's what makes it beautiful, that's what makes it fun, that's what makes it exciting. The feminine is very unpredictable. But you know, if you're staying in integrity, which is one of the main things that feminine energy and feminine wisdom stands for, integrity, authenticity, yes, and compassion. But if you're in those energies, then you have nothing to worry about. If you are 
acting outside of integrity, if you are acting with anything less than compassion, if you're not being authentic, if you're trying to control people, if you're trying to get people to conform to a way of being just to make yourself happy or just to make yourself feel safe or for your own egoic satisfaction or whatnot, then you damn right you better fear the feminine because she's not going to stand for it. <laughs> I mean, what, 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 what? <laughs> what do you want, right? Okay. Um, that was very much a channeling. Also, with this channel, what else is coming through? With the child that holds the key, okay? We're getting back to our innocence. We're getting back to our inner child. We're getting back to what makes us laugh, is what I just heard. What, what fills us with joy, what fills us with wonder. Instead of wearing these masks of conformity and, and dogma and religion and, and um, societal norms and standards and and familial familial tradition and tradition and all that bullshit we're getting back to what makes us happy what fills us with joy what piques our interest your inner child has the key to your happiness now i don't want to i don't want to completely run the hierophant energy through the mud I'm not trying to drag you completely masculines. However, uh, well, not however, but because this all served as a purpose. The other, the other thing that the Hierophant stands for is teaching and learning. And a lot, this has been coming up a lot lately, both in collective and personal readings, okay? This Hierophant energy. But the main message is, yes, all right, so there were some injustices, there were some things that weren't fair, you had to deal with some conformity, blah, 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 but... You're on the other side of it now, aren't you? So that means that I, that just stood to teach you something. What did it stand to teach you? Well, the big glaring one is the fact that it st stood to teach you the value of independence and individuality and autonomy and sovereignty and being who you are or who you choose to be, not who others tell you to. Which leads us to the next two cards, the devil with the seven of wands, keeping that devil at bay, keeping your boundaries in place. And this has more, this is more than just keeping the devil in check and keeping fear in check, blah, blah, blah. This has everything to do with keeping your mind in check, keeping your thoughts your beliefs in check, not allowing yourself to slip into fear-based conditional reality. And from that, oh, there's, there's two. Shut up. Shut the front freaking door. There are two cards here. I was moving on to the next one, which is the Nine of Cups. But then I was like, wait a second, there are two cards here. Shut up, is that the star? It is the star. <laughs> Yo, guys, look at this. Not only is this healing, but this is like, this is some extreme, extreme. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. This is some fucking extreme wish fulfillment. Like this is the end all be all of everything you could have always wanted. But that comes with you releasing conformity, transforming out of that, okay? Finding your independence, overcoming the conformist way of being, the, the dogma, and, 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 and also with the seven of wands, this is not an energy of fighting, trying to fight back, trying to be righteous, where, to, 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 to show, to, you know, to show the establishment, blah, blah, no. This is not even wanting anything to do with any of that. This is just being like, you know what? That is not for me. That does not make me happy. That is not who I am. That's not who I wanna be anymore. That's not how I wanna live anymore. So I'm just going to place a boundaries. I'm gonna put a wall in between me and that and I'm just gonna go forth and live my life. The star and the nine of cups. Both cards of wish fulfillment. Oh my God. I told you guys, things are getting better. It's getting better, but you have to put in the work. 
I mean, eventually, sure, the energies are going to let up and you'll feel you'll feel relief again, but that will only be fleeting because then things are just going to cycle back and you're going to be faced with this again. So if you're not taking the time to really do the work to face it now, it's just going to come back up later. And I'm not trying to like scare you. For some people, you are. Um, sorry, I just I just wanted to make sure my mic was connected. Um, for some of you, you are really doing it, but you're doing it in slow increments and it's it's okay. It's not necessarily all gonna be cleared out in this cycle. I mean, that's for all of us really, I guess. But there, I'm picking up on a small pocket of you that are slowly, slowly chipping away at it, which is a good thing, okay? You're getting there, you're making progress. That's all we're asking for. But if you're not, if you're completely not even trying to deal with it, trying to face it in some way, I mean, it's just going to come back later. But now is the time to do this work. You have the opportunity. Take it. The faster you can clear this energy up, the faster you get to this energy. Your wish fulfillment, your healing, your happiness, your satisfaction. And for a lot of us, we're finding satisfaction already. And actually, that's something else I wanted to mention too. I've been dealing a, 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 a common message lately for the collective has been cleaning up the discrepancies and getting in alignment with what it is you want. But many of us don't know what we want. I just did a reading for someone yesterday and we were talking about it and she was like, I don't know what I want. I was like, I don't know what I want either, but there's no reason to rush yourself. That's part of the message here. You don't have to rush into figuring out what it is, into identifying what it is you want. What's more important right now is to clean up the vibration get in the vortex and learn how to stay there. Yes, um, but for me specifically, I'm, I've been slipping into a point where it's like, the more I clean up my vibration and the more I work on just being happy for the sake of being happy, I'm realizing I don't really, I don't know what I want because I don't really want anything. <laughs> I don't. I mean, sure, it would be nice to have maybe a bigger living space and maybe my own space. I mean, it's not like I hate living with, I like my roommates, they're cool, you know? That I don't feel so alone, but at the same time, I would love to be in my own apartment. Um, okay, so maybe that is what I want. I mean, that's really the only thing that I could say that I want, but at the same time, it's like I don't, I don't really need it. I'm very happy with what I have. I like my little, my, I have my room, I have my space. I mean, it can get a little cluttered sometimes, but it's a nice little sanctuary. I love it here. I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with the work that I do. I graduated this, this, this course from this course and back in July and it's like, I'm not, I have no extreme desire to really pursue any other sort of work. Granted, I'm kind of in this headspace where it's like, I really don't want to be in the general workforce right now around a bunch of people that hate their jobs or hate their lives. Like, no, no, I don't want that. You know what I mean? I just, I don't really want anything, which is a little worrisome because if I don't really want anything is nothing really gonna change. But at the same time, it's like, why does it really need to change? It's a paradox, you guys. <laughs> I just wanted to bring that up there. I mean, I, that's a topic of discussion. I would like to, I, I would really, I would really like to hear what you guys have to say about that. Like, what's your perspective? As you're going through these energies, are, what are you feeling in that sense? Okay, let's get to clarification time here. I'm good, I do, I'm curious, I'm curious. So I'm going to clarify both parts here. We have the Hierophant, the Devil, and the Seven of Wands. I'm going to get some clarity on that. I'm going to use the... Uh, go okay, they're saying the Golden Universal Tarot. All right. Um, I was going to use the... Gosh, why do I never remember the, the Wild Unknown... Tarot, but they're saying use the Golden Universal Tarot. Now, I tend to use the Golden Universal Tarot when I'm getting messages, when I'm like channeling directly from spirit, when spirit, like, you know what I mean? Kind of like that, even though I'm doing that anyway. 
the golden color on this to me is as if it's spirits messages not just me reading the energies around you this is spirits messages directly okay so that's what i'm using for this let's talk about the hierophant the devil and the seven of wands what do you have to say about this spirit Um, but I, I, I see gold as a color of, um, actually I use gold to symbolize gratitude, but also I see gold as a color of divine energy, like straight from source. All right. So spirit divine, what do you have to say about this energy? The Hierophant, the devil and the seven of wands. Okay. Okay. It's a little troublesome, but it's not that bad. Overall energy, we do have the Page of Pentacles. So yes, you are in fact starting on a new life, a new cycle. Oh, I get it. Okay. Um, especially with the death here, but now we're in the re... It's, it's not just... It's not even that we're in... We're like dying. We're in... We're literally in the rebirth period, the rebirth cycle here, okay? You do have the Page of Pentacles. The Page of Pentacles is representing, is symbolizing the level up or the new reality, physical reality that you're stepping into. And so you're, you are in fact having to find your footing. You have, oh, excellent. You have the Page of Swords, the Five of Wands, and the Nine of Swords, okay? The Page of Swords is that intellectual part of you that's trying to make sense of what's going on around you. All right, the Page of Swords is like the sentry, is the individual that the king and queen send out to find information, the, sentry, the, the, the scout. The Page of Swords is the scout. But what this is saying here is you are trying to make sense of this new reality that you're coming into. And it's, you're, there's a lot of anxiety, and, there's, and most of that anxiety is coming from the differing of opinion. Okay, and a lot of that has to do with the juxtaposition of yourself between your old self and your new self. Your old self is still kind of dying away. I will say you have crossed the threshold here. You're probably around, collectively speaking, on average, on average, for those of us that are resonating with this, with this message right now, we're at like a 60-40 Percentage, whereas 60% of our new life has been stepped into, 40% of it is still kind, to, kind of trying to fall away. And that's just a ballpark. That's like a general, um, for many of us, it could be more. But there's still a little bit of that old self that's still trying to fight, that old egoic self that's still trying to fight for what it stood for, okay? But, but you're coming from this place. Three of Cups, the union, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right, I said it, the union <laughs> of body, mind, and spirit. And this is definitely a cause for celebration, all right? You also have the Six of Wands here at the bottom. Oh, come on, you. You're making me ruin my cards <laughs> at the bottom of the deck. This is victory. This is, this is absolutely victory. This is you having overcome some serious obstacles still working on it but the victory is at hand here three of wands is putting you on your path king of wands is bringing you um confidence self-confidence Ooh, eight of pentacles is in reverse though interesting That's very interesting. I'm getting a Virgo energy from the Eight of Pentacles. Um, and I'm also, I'm also getting... Yes, all right, I heard hard work is paying off. What I'm feeling like here is a number of things. Um, the biggest part, one, is that you don't have to work so hard. But that's also piggybacking on the other part that I'm getting. It's like you're not working so hard on being perfect or being the ideal representation that the hierophant and the devil would would be influencing you towards and that's where the that's where the virgo energy is coming from the perfectionism 
because the Eight of Pentacles represents craftsmanship, yes? You see how he, this man is painstakingly crafting all eight of these pentacles in identical form, right? This can represent um, hard work, mundane work, um, craftsmanship, like I said. Um, if you're an artist, this is you, this can be, this can symbolize you working on your art, fine tuning your art, fine tuning yourself. This is just, this does represent a lot of hard work. But here in this situation, you're foregoing crafting yourself so that you can be an ideal representation of what maybe society or societal standards or whatnot may be um, forcing for some of you, for some of us, forcing or influencing us into being and instead giving, foregoing that for the perfection of yourself of just being who you are, being confident in who, we, in who you are. The King of Wands is an energy of someone who really just doesn't give a flying fuck what you think about them or what you think about what they want, their actions. And that can be a bad thing. The King of Wands can be an energy of narcissism. The only other individual, well, no, that's not true. Um, the King of Wands is like the leading is probably like one of the first individuals or first types of energies you would think of in terms of narcissism. All right, but this is not narcissism here. This is you being confident in who you are and standing up for who you are and not giving a damn what anybody else has to say about it. That's what you're working on. That's what you're moving towards. And that is you being on your path. Three of Wands. I've been seeing the Three of Wands lately as being on your path. Three of Wands can also represent travel. It can represent waiting for a return on an investment. It can represent um, continuing a momentum of something that you have chosen and have been working towards. So yeah, okay, being on your path and continuing your momentum are kind of going hand in hand here. That's wonderful, guys. That's really wonderful. Okay, so now, okay, let's talk about this star and the nine of cups, this wish fulfillment. I, what do you have to say about this, spirit? I am really excited to see what you have to say about this. Ooh, yes, in diddly do. Oh my God. I fucking love, I fucking love it. Holy shit, you guys. So first of all, I wanna point out that we have the five of pentacles that has come out and has fallen here and it has fallen in reverse. Booyah, bitches. All this energy of not feeling good enough, not being adequate enough, out the motherfucking window. <laughs> you have the hermit, the ace of wands, strength, and wait for it, wait for it, Wait for it. The Nine of Cups again. Overall energy, the Queen of Cups. Beautiful. I mean, damn, you guys. Yo, look, this is really, uh, this, the, whatever work that you're doing in this period right now towards your ascension, whatever work you're doing, whenever this resonates for you, because this, there are going to be some people in which that this reading specifically resonates for them after we've even exited the energies of when it was recorded, okay? Um, but whatever work you're doing during this cycle is paying the fuck off, y'all. The Hermit, Ace of Wands, Strength, and the Nine of Cups again. I mean, talk about being an individual, talking about being you, strictly you and no one else. Having the strength to not only find your inner light, but then allow it to shine. And that's absolutely what you're dealing with here. Okay, page of swords, five of wands, nine of swords. There is a new you that is emerging, death and rebirth. There is a new you that is emerging here and you are finding 
developing, cultivating the strength to let that shine. Regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the, regardless of the outcome, no holds barred. These are all things I'm hearing in terms of this. Seeing this here, I mean, it's great to see the Ace of Wands with the Hermit, but seeing the strength here in conjunction with these two is really filling me with a lot of joy. Like this, I'm, I am so proud of us here. So proud of us. Everything we get, we're, it, we are, it's well worth it. And I, and I find it really poignant that it's the Nine of Cups that came out again and not even the star, because this is saying, what this is saying in the Nine of Cups is saying that there is, there is physical satisfaction that's going to follow, that this, all this work that we're doing is leading us to. The 3D, Queen of Cups again. Focusing on your emotional reality is really going to pay off, guys. That's what the Queen of Cups is representing here. And she did come out in the beginning of the reading. Her back was turned, but that was because it was symbolizing we are going within, we are finding ourselves. We're cleaning up our emotional reality, we're cleaning up our emotional vibration, we're cleaning up our vibration in general. I mean, we're just, we're learning, I just heard we're learning to be happy for the sake of being happy and nothing else. And that does take releasing a lot of the conformity and the, um, the dogma and the, what is the specific word I'm looking for? There is a, there is a word that would, is perfect here, but it, it's escaping me. Um, conditioning, there it is, the conditioning. It takes releasing ourselves from the conditioning. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna close the reading now with Oracle Guidance, and we are going with the dragons. Them good old dragons. Uh, yeah. Okay. Nolan, Nolan. Oh, um, I want to show you guys this. Um, the last time I used the dragon oracle, I think it was Monday. And I was cleaning out the deck. Well, just like clearing the energies. And this came out. The Omega Dragon. Um, and it says, harness the divine feminine power of creation. Intention. Hold your vision birth the higher consciousness and ever since that came out I felt it was really really important and so I didn't put it back in the deck I have left it on top of the deck with a crystal on top of it just to make sure that the energy stays clear and it's not getting contaminated but that was really important for me specifically and I know it's going to resonate with others of you okay um, harness the divine feminine power of creation intention hold your vision birth the higher consciousness I just, I really wanted to share that with you guys. All right, so with that said, we're gonna get, we're gonna get our Oracle Guidance now. Give me just a second here. For our Wednesday, for our hump day. All right, three shuffles. All right, guys, best message, please, Spirit, Oracle Guidance from the Dragons and from Spirit to close out our reading today. Best message, please. Calling upon the Dragons for your guidance, for your love, for your care. Aw. Yay. Hold on. Wait. I'll use this one. We have the pure white dragon from Orion transforms your ascension knowledge into pure wisdom process what you know act with truth and honesty let your wings of light grow and expand beautiful so beautiful let's see Ooh, seventh dimensional dragon yay <laughs> Okay. 
Orion is the planet of wisdom. And it's so funny because I this I believe this card came out in the past because I remember saying how I've always had a special connection with the constellation of Orion. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And I can't t I can't really tell if it's because I could always see it. Like that was the one constellation that I could always pick out first because um, I would I would always be able to find Orion's belt and then I would be able to put the rest piece the rest together. I can't tell if it's just that or if it's because I have a soul connection to Orion. I probably have a soul connection to Orion, like let's be honest. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, Orion is the planet of wisdom, the ability to take the knowledge we obtain through our left brain and use it joyfully for the highest good of all. Beings from many star systems take their understanding to Orion to ask how to use it with wisdom. All the beings from Orion, including the seventh dimensional pure white dragons, carry a special light in their soul. The color white indicates purity, clarity, and advanced enlightenment. Archangel Gabriel, the unicorns of the great white brotherhood, all hold this incredible, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Archangel Gabriel, the unicorns, and the Great White Brotherhood all hold this incredible level of purity. Source light is diamond white light. You know, maybe I am from Orion because I've always identified. I always, I've always thought I was a, a unicorn. Anyway, <laughs> as white holds the vibration of truth, when the pure white dragons from Orion shower it into us, it lights up our own impeccable honor and brilliance. They are preparing us for greater advancement on our ascension path. The guidance here is, a pure white dragon of Orion has come to you today to advise you to examine what you know with enlightened eyes. Process any information you are working with through your right brain to discover how to use it for the highest good. The high frequency dragons from Orion will be with you to help you with this process. They will allow you to advance your spiritual growth and expand your wings of light. When you hold white in your aura, people trust and respect you. This card calls on you to speak your truth, act with honesty, and be totally honorable in all your dealings. So there you have it, guys. So there you have it. This is a beautiful reading. I know it's been really tough lately, but, but obviously, guys, this is... This is all really, really paying off. I mean, it's it's totally worth it in the end, don't you think? But with that, I hope you guys have a great day. And I look forward to connecting with you again very soon for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye.